the Pentagon's personnel chief to step down, and a judge rules on military absentee ballots in Wisconsin. All of that and more today, August 1st, 2023. Good morning, early birds. I'm Zimone Perez, and this is the Early Bird Brief, produced by Defense News and Military Times. First up, the Pentagon's head of personnel and readiness announced his upcoming departure from the Pentagon on Monday. Gilbert Cisneros, a Navy veteran and former two-term congressman, will leave his post as Undersecretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness in early September. Cisneros has been in his role since August 2021. He has worked on numerous hot-button social issues in the military during his tenure. That includes the Pentagon's newest abortion policy for military personnel. It covers the travel costs and leave time for troops who travel out of state due to abortion restrictions or bans. That policy has been met with a hold on all uniformed and civilian Pentagon nominees by Senator Tommy Tuberville of Alabama. If the impasse is not ended, Cisneros' replacement may face a similar stalemate in their confirmation process. Over the past two years, Cisneros has also worked to implement 80 projects to reform the military's sexual assault and harassment guidelines and practices. That includes standing up an independent counsel's office for sexual assault cases. Cisneros told Congress, while movement has been slow, the speed is methodical and meant to continue building trust between the department and service members. Getting this right requires we move as expeditiously as possible to implement change while also ensuring we do not rush to failure. If we improperly rush now, we will not be able to pick up the pieces and establish trust with our service members again. Cisneros was a vocal opponent of former President Donald Trump's ban on transgender service members while in Congress. He has defended LGBTQ plus service members and supported President Joe Biden's revocation of the ban. As the Pentagon's chief diversity and inclusion officer, Cisneros has also defended DEI efforts within the military. It is a diverse talent pool that ultimately contributes to our success on the battlefield and beyond. Diversity and inclusion are imperative to recruit and retain the best and brightest talent, and we must ensure that we reach out to all communities. His tenure in the personnel position came as the military has failed to meet its recruiting targets over the last few cycles. Aside from the Marine Corps, each service is projecting shortfalls in the fiscal year 2023 as branches struggle to attract new recruits. The Army is facing the largest deficit of 10,000 soldiers projected by the end of the season. Another important story, officials said yesterday that an Australian Army helicopter that crashed Friday hit the water with a, quote, catastrophic impact. The Australian Defense Minister said there is no chance its four crew members survived. The helicopter crashed during a nighttime multinational exercise with the United States and other nations near the Whitsunday Islands on the Great Barrier Reef. The lost Taipan helicopter had been taking part in Talisman Saber. That's the U.S.-Australian military exercise that is largely based in the Queensland state. This year's exercise involves 13 nations and more than 30,000 military personnel. An Australian defense official said the exercise was continuing yesterday with some changes near the recovery operation. They also thank the United States and Canada for their help in the search and recovery efforts. Here's why it matters. This is the second emergency involving an Australian Taipan since March. Australia's fleet of more than 40 of MRH-90 Taipan helicopters was grounded after this recent crash, and there are doubts any will fly again. They will be grounded until crash investigators determine what caused the tragedy. The government announced in January it plans to replace them with 40 U.S. Blackhawks. The Taipan's retirement date of December 2024 would be 13 years earlier than Australia had initially planned. Also, in case you missed it, the United States said that over the weekend it will expand its military industrial base by helping Australia manufacture guided missiles and rockets within two years. The ramped up defense cooperation comes amid China's growing influence in the Indo Pacific. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said China has been throwing its weight around in the region during bilateral talks last week. We've seen troubling PRC coercion from the East China Sea to the South China Sea to right here in the Southwest Pacific. And we'll continue to support our allies and partners as they defend themselves from bullying behavior. In other news, a group of Republican lawmakers is pushing Defense Department leaders to retry Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl for desertion after his conviction was overthrown by a federal judge last week. For more on this, Military Times Congressional Bureau Chief Leo Shane III joins the episode today. Can you quickly remind us who Bo Bergdahl is, what he was convicted of, and also what happened recently that led to that conviction getting thrown out by a federal judge? 
Yeah, so Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl uh, first came in the news in 2009 when he was captured by Taliban soldiers, uh, becoming a prisoner of war in the war in Afghanistan. Uh, details were scant at the time, but in subsequent uh, months and years, we found out that Bergdahl simply walked off base. The reasons for that have been in dispute. Uh, his lawyers have said that he was trying to report uh, some command leadership problems, and he, he felt this was the only way he could do it, was to actually physically leave the base he was on. Army officials have said that they think that he may have had a, a psychic break or some sort of uh, mental breakdown, which convinced him that walking off base is a good idea. Regardless, uh, he was picked up by Taliban fighters uh, subsequently and uh, imprisoned by them for almost five years, tortured, beaten, um, treated pretty terribly by, by all accounts. In 2014, the Obama administration brokered a deal for the release of Bergdahl, uh, releasing five senior Taliban members to get him back. Uh, at the time, that was heralded as a, as a pretty... Um, momentous occasion it was uh, returning a prisoner of war to U.S. custody, but uh, it was immediately decried by some folks like Senator John McCain and uh, then presidential candidate Donald Trump uh, because he was seen as a deserter. He was seen as somebody who forced the military to to go look for him and go uh, go search for him. Thousands of man hours, many uh, s several folks were injured. Conservative pundits have, have pointed to uh, several missions in the area where U.S. Uh, troops were killed uh, and blamed Bergdahl for that. So once he was back on U.S. soil, he was immediately facing uh, legal consequences and, and legal ramifications. Uh, he went to trial back in 2017, pled guilty to desertion, um, and was, uh, was um, found guilty at that point. Military judges said that they didn't think he should serve any more time in jail because of the torture and because of the horrible treatment he received overseas, but he was dishonorably discharged and fined ten thousand dollars in back pay. It looked like that was going to be the end of the story, but just uh, earlier this month, uh, another federal judge on appeal threw out the conviction. They said that the judge who was originally involved had not reported that he had petitioned to the Trump administration to become an an, an, an immigration judge because he didn't reveal that. Um, the the new federal judge said that's a that's a conflict of interest. He should have made clear that he was looking for a job in the administration while Trump was railing against Bergdahl. He had applied for that. He didn't find anything wrong with the ruling in specifically, but um, he did say that the entire conviction should be uh, should be set aside for now. And who in Congress is demanding a review of options for a new trial? And do we know yet how this is all going to be playing out? So we don't really know how this is going to play out. Um, we know that five uh, five Republican lawmakers, all of them veterans, have come out and said, look, this is a serious issue. He is still a deserter in our eyes, and there should be a conviction against him. Whether or not it means jail time, whether or not it means a new penalty is irrelevant. They want it on the record that Bergdahl was punished or should be punished for for deserting the army. And their argument is, uh, look, you know, you can't have people just walk away from their post. You can't have people turn themselves over, cause significant problems for rescue, search and rescue missions um, without there being some consequences. So they're looking for a new trial just to sort of foot stomp that. We don't know if there will be any new action. Uh, the Department of Justice hasn't said anything yet. The Department of Defense hasn't said anything. If they do pursue this again, it's not clear what punishments they would look for. He's already been dishonorably discharged. That's not being reversed. Um, I don't know that he has yet petitioned for any of the, the money that was withheld. I guess he could, um, and I guess a new trial would prevent him from getting this. But it's more a, a symbolic case uh, of, of justice here than actual repercussions for him. Bergdahl has been out of the limelight for the last few years, um, trying to, to move on and, and stay out of the public eye because of the criticism of him. This is going to bring that back up, and this is going to be an issue potentially down the road for for some campaigns, the idea of holding folks accountable and making sure the military is as ready as it needs to be. Thanks, Leo. For more conversations like that, please like and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Also on your radar for today, a Wisconsin judge dismissed the GOP state lawmakers' lawsuit over military voting records. The judge said last Friday that the challenge should have been brought against a local election official and not the statewide elections commission. State Representative Janelle Branchen has promoted election conspiracy theories. She, along with a local veterans group, sued the Wisconsin Elections Commission in November. It was done in an attempt to stop military absentee ballots from being counted in the 2022 midterms. The lawsuit came in response to the actions of a top Milwaukee elections official who falsely requested military absentee ballots and sent them to Branchen's home. The former deputy director of the Milwaukee Election Commission, Kimberly Zapata, claims she was trying to expose a vulnerability in the voting process, but now she faces charges of election fraud and misconduct in office. 
The Waukesha County Circuit Judge refused to order military absentee ballots to be sequestered in November. He issued his decision just 14 hours before polls opened. Other efforts to address potential vulnerabilities in the military absentee voting process are ongoing. A bipartisan group of Wisconsin lawmakers in May proposed requiring service members provide their Department of Defense identification numbers when requesting a military absentee ballot. Local clerks would then be required to verify the voter's identity using that information. And now, here are some other stories that we're hearing chirps about. In case you missed it, the U.S. announced $345 million in military aid for Taiwan. This is the Biden administration's first major package, drawing on America's own stockpiles to help Taiwan defend itself against China. In a news conference during his visit to Australia, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin emphasized that the military capabilities are for defenses. A Marine Corps drill instructor was acquitted Friday of homicide in the 2021 death of a Marine recruit. West African nations have announced travel and economic sanctions against Niger and have threatened to use force if the leaders of a coup don't reinstate the democratically elected president within one week. And Stars and Stripes is reporting that eight U.S. soldiers in Vilsack, Germany, are recovering after their transport vehicle overturned while heading to a range at the Army Training Center in Bavaria. And on this day in history, in 1943, the military conducted a daring World War II raid known as Operation Tidal Wave. The strategic bombing mission targeted oil refineries in Romania. That's it for us this morning. To get more top stories and breaking news, go to defensenews.com slash ebb to subscribe to the Early Bird Brief newsletter. Please give us a like, rating, and a comment wherever you get your podcasts. And be sure to follow us on social media at Defense underscore News and at Military Times. The Early Bird Brief is hosted and produced by me, Zimone Z. Perez. Today's episode features stories by myself, the Associated Press, and Leo Shane III. Our editor-in-chief is Mike Groose. Have a great day. Defense.